Missed it. And B. Well, that was close. Three weeks ago, I watched Joel Embiid nearly sink this absolute long bomb. This was insane. But after doing some digging around, I realized that this shot, if it went in, would have been far more insane than any of us could have imagined. Okay, so Embiid shot the ball from here, 85 feet out from the basket. With 0.8 seconds on the clock, Embiid snagged this rebound and yanked the ball 85 feet and missed by mere inches. Of course, if you're a fan of basketball, you've seen crazy shots like this before. The clock is winding down and some player either grabs a rebound or gets an inbounds pass and just throws an absolute Hail Mary and hopes for the best. You've seen NBA shots kind of like Embiid's, but you've never seen a shot quite like Embiid's. In fact, no one has ever seen an NBA shot like this one. The longest basketball shot ever made was by a man named Elon Bowler back in 2014, who sank a shot from 112 feet out, which is all the way back here. Impossibly far, literally. So let's stick with the NBA. In the 75 years since the league was created, these are the longest shots ever made. Vince Carter's shot in 2016, LeBron's heave in 2007, Magic Johnson's shot in 1987 that oddly never gets talked about, and of course, Baron Davis's legendary 89-foot bomb in 2001. These shots are pretty much one in a million. The chance of making a shot from this range, about 53%. The chance of making a shot from here, about 37%. Then from this point out, the probability of drilling a shot begin to diminish rapidly. In this range, chances of hitting a shot fall to 15%. And from this range, the chance of hitting a shot fall off a cliff to just 2%. And then there's this region. This is the ruin my shooting percentage region where your chances of hitting a shot are 0.3%. These shots really aren't even worth taking. And when players do actually attempt them, it's a one-way ticket to an appearance on Shaq and a Fool. Like back when Landry Fields put up this shot and nearly decapitated this poor guy. Or back when Corey Jefferson threw up this blatantly unnecessary shot with eight seconds left on the clock and didn't even come remotely close to making it. I mean, by the trajectory of this moonshot, it probably came up so short because it hit the ceiling of the arena. Jesus, what are you doing? Or what about the time when Nazir Muhammad put up a shot that Shaq called a full court fadeaway? And when you watch it again, you have to admit, this man really did shoot a full court fadeaway. <laughs> Why? Nazir played in the NBA for 18 seasons, and in those 18 seasons, he only attempted eight three-pointers. And this was one of them. But as bad of a miss as that shot was, it's hard to top the monstrosity that Enos Cantor threw up years ago. Throws a 500 yard touchdown pass. I love this. Back, 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 back. This shot never even had a chance. Man's is about as deep as you can get. But really? This is the best you can do? This is not okay. The ball is in the tunnel for crying out loud. Somebody's got to go get that. Okay, okay. So what about deep shots that actually went in but didn't count? Like back in 2012, when Marcus Camby sank this shot that broke Baron Davis's record, except he didn't get it off in time. Or what about this shot from Jay Crowder that would have shattered the record for the longest shot in NBA history? Unfortunately, this shot didn't even count because it wasn't a shot. It was an inbounds pass. So let's talk about some incredibly deep shots that actually went in and counted. Like this shot that Stephen Curry put up in 2015 against the Grizzlies. Nothing but nets from 70 feet out at the buzzer. Here's a casual 79 foot laser by Andre Drummond. One of the longest shots in NBA history made by a man that can't even hit a free throw. Or what about Zach Randolph's 70 foot buzzer beater against the Kings in 2014? This man hits this insane shot and then walks off the court like he's done it before. Come on, that's a once in a lifetime shot. He is not doing that again. On that trip, Trey Burke, 18 points in 34 minutes last night. Oh! I stand corrected. Then of course there's the classic LeBron James half speed full court shots from way back in 2003. I remember this clip vividly. That young rookie from the Cavaliers casually hitting full court bombs. 
You should have seen the look on my eight-year-old face when I found out this wasn't real. But then in 2015, LeBron proved that he could, in fact, hit a shot like this. Yeah, I mean, that's great and all, but we ain't talking about practice. You gotta do it in a game. James. Oh! My goodness! It's impossible to get that shot off. But as incredible as these shots were, none of them were game-winning or even game-tying shots. Of course, Embiid's would have tied the game, not win it, but it's one thing to throw a shot up as the time runs out. It's a completely different anomaly when a player gets off a deep ball with time running out to win or tie the game. And that's what Joel Embiid almost did. In the history of the NBA, there have been 789 game-winning buzzer beaters. The average distance of these buzzer beaters, just 18 feet. And out of those 789 game-winning buzzer beaters, 749 of them were from less than 30 feet out. 35 game-winning buzzer beaters came from between 30 feet and half court. And just five, five game winners came from half court to 55 feet out. In fact, some of y'all may remember some of these deep buzzer beating game winners. Like this game winner from Jeremy Lamb against the Toronto Raptors from 48 feet out possibly the craziest regular season shot in recent NBA history. The last time someone made a game-winning buzzer beater from at least 48 feet out wasn't in the past five seasons. It wasn't in the last 10 or even 20 seasons. Matter of fact, the last time someone hit a shot from at least this far out was before I was even born. They're all standing at the sports arena. Manning against Ellis. What by the tempo. Jackson for the game! Yes! Oh my! Chris Jackson and the Nuggets at the buzzer in dramatic fashion! 55 feet out, nothing but net. No, seriously, this shot by Chris Jackson was about as pure as a shot can get. With 0.5 seconds on the clock and a hand in his grill, Jackson knocked down one of the longest game-winning buzzer beaters in NBA history. Scratch that, the longest game-winning buzzer beater in NBA history. In 75 seasons, no one has ever hit a game-winning buzzer beater from further out than this one. Before Jackson hit this absurd shot, Julius Irving held the record. In a 1986 matchup against the Dallas Mavericks, Julius Irving hit this 53-foot game-winning heave. And before Dr. J, the record for the longest game-winning or game-tying shot was held by this man who set the record so long ago that I'm genuinely surprised they even documented it. Which means that for 38 seasons, this awkward hop step chest pass of a heave by Julius Irving was the longest game winning buzzer beater in NBA history. And that's it. That is the complete history of really, really deep game winning buzzer beaters. This doesn't happen often. In fact, it very rarely happens which means this entire region of the court, anything past 55 feet, has never seen a game-winning or game-tying buzzer beater in the history of the NBA. Joel Embiid was just inches, maybe even less, from sinking a buzzer beater from here. Of the 2,127 shots Embiid has attempted in his entire career, 898 of them were three-pointers, and just 295 went in. Of those 295 threes, the deepest shot he has ever hit in his career was from 32 feet out, nine feet from the three-point line, and 53 feet away from the shot that almost was. Hope you all enjoyed, and as always, until next time.